Hey crew, Joe Hubbard here and welcome to episode nine of Rants and Raves, the place where everything's music centric. Hey, I really appreciate all the support I've been getting since I launched this vlog series. So keep hitting that like button below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Today I'm going to break down something that's become quite controversial over the past few years in music education, which is the subject of practicing with a metronome. On the one hand, we've got a camp suggesting that we use a metronome for everything that we practice. And on the other hand, there's another camp recommending that we don't use the metronome at all. So who's right? Well, that's what I'm going to explore in this episode. So sit back, grab some popcorn and enjoy the show. When I teach, I use the crawl, walk, run method. This methodology ensures a high level of skill is adopted by verifying that the student does not move to the next level before they've absorbed the skills presented to them in the current phase. During the crawl phase, the teacher should introduce, teach, and execute the lesson material by the numbers very slowly and out of time, which means no metronome or any other timekeeping device. In turn, the student should do the same thing, concentrating on the details and executing the new lesson slowly and out of time. At this point, there's no fluidity established yet, but everything is broken down into its component parts for complete examination. Progressing to the walk phase, you'd continue to practice the lesson material by the numbers, only now striving for more fluidity and seamlessness, but still maintaining a slow and deliberate pace while playing out of time. Please note that the term out of time means no metronomes or drum machines. It's only at the run phase where you'd start working on developing performance speed. Metronomes and drum machines should only be introduced at this level. Why? because when a metronome is introduced into your practice session, it starts to induce the state of performance. Why is this so important? Because when you play or perform, you will only be as good as you are within the moment of that particular performance. You see, purposeful practice involves a lot of deep thinking about how to improve your weaknesses, what you're not good at. And it's not what I consider to be a fun process, but rather a positive struggle enabling you to achieve what you set out for yourself. The real fun of practice is enjoying the results afterwards, much like you feel after a really hard workout in the gym. On the other hand, performance is where you don't want to be thinking in analytical terms, but instead become an observant and focused in the present moment, only reacting to the music that's going on all around you. So when you perform, this becomes a clear representation of how well you can play at any given moment. So in other words, the performance is the acid test for the time that you've devoted towards your practice. When you practice, however, you're supposed to be concentrating on what you can't do, and therefore improving your general level of musicianship becomes much more accelerated than if you just play all the time. Because the use of a metronome evokes a state of performance, other than the run phase of your practice regime where you're working on developing performance speed, you'd probably be better off not using a metronome during the crawl and walk phases. Oh, I can just hear some of you saying right now, but I thought the reason for practicing with a metronome was to develop a good sense of time. Remember, just like the bass guitar, a metronome is an inanimate object. Claiming that a metronome will give you good time is identical to a salesman claiming that a beautiful custom-made bass guitar will give you good technique. So the next question becomes, how do we develop a good sense of time? Well, the first thing that we need to understand is how to interpret rhythmic subdivisions that are superimposed over the underlying pulse. So the second thing that we need to start working on is counting. The purpose of counting is simply to create a reference point so that you can eventually start learning to understand how the rhythmic subdivisions sound in relation to where the beats fall. Counting is done in practice, enabling us to learn how to feel the music correctly in the performance phase. The third thing to focus on is form. You must be able to hear groups of measures going by from the micro to the macro. This is one thing that I've noticed is left out of a lot of music education programs for some strange reason, but is an essential skill for developing good time. It also has to be said that listening to and understanding different musical styles plays a vital role in learning the various interpretations about how certain subdivisions are felt against the underlying pulse in the music you're playing. Here's an excerpt from an instructional video that I recorded on county rhythms over a blues form. I'll stick the link up at the end of this video just in case you want to watch this lesson in its entirety. 
When working through this etude, keep in mind that you need to be able to understand where the beats are within the form of the blues. The only way to hear this properly is to start counting the quarter notes while you play the etude. This is challenging, so you have to allow yourself some time in getting this right. Many who have tried this have the propensity to give up and say, I can play it as long as I'm not counting. But nine times out of ten, the result is filled with uncertainties with the syncopation and the form. So to own it, you have to be able to count it and play it at the same time. Many of my drummer friends tell their students, if you can't say it, then you can't play it. Check this out. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. A huge mistake that so many people make is practicing performance disproportionately to the hours that they spend in the practice room. Jamming along aimlessly with a backing track will not yield the rapid results that you're looking for. So the question becomes, how do we practice performance and how much time should we devote to it? Years ago, sports games like football, baseball, or soccer would play scrimmages or friendly games preseason as a predominant training methodology to prepare the team for playing the game. As time went on, sports teams realized that they weren't improving fast enough and started to shift their training paradigm, devoting only 5% of their overall training to scrimmages, while 95% was devoted to what is called attribute training, where they would do things like running tires, box jumps, sledgehammer drills, along with offensive and defensive strategies. Students often ask me, what does running arpeggios up and down my fingerboard have to do with playing music? But at the same time, what does running tires have to do with playing football? The answer lies in attribute development. In the case of the football player, he's working on footwork. In the case of the bass player, he's working on fluidity, tone development, and core tone recognition. Borrowing this methodology from sports, I always advise my students to practice performance for only 5% of the overall time they spend in the practice room. So jamming with records, play along tracks, drum machines, or sequence tracks are just some of the ways that constitute simulating a performance on your own. 5% of one hour is three minutes. So if you were practicing 20 hours per week, that would equate to only one hour of simulated performance time. That's all you need. So let's get back to my original question of whether or not you should be practicing with a metronome and whose advice is right. Actually, both camps are right to a certain degree. However, your results will be highly influenced by understanding how to determine the differences between practice and performance. Until next time, practice smart, work hard, and play creatively.